My name is Gerald Cartwright. I go by the name of Jerry, and uh, my rate is uh, radio and uh, master chief, qualified in submarines. We came back to uh, San Diego, and I went to the Naval Amphibious uh, Schools in Coronado, California. While I was over in the Philippines, I made E8 senior uh, senior chief. So when I got back to the Philippines, I became the uh, the uh, chief in charge, basically, of uh, five communications courses. And while I was at Coronado, I made Master Chief E9. When my time was up there after three years, I was had uh, 18 years in the service at the time, and I was ready to go back to sea. So I contacted my detailer, and I said, hey, I said, I want a diesel boat submarine, because I'd been on three diesels. Detailer says, Master Chief says, uh, we don't have any diesels left out there. He says, the only thing I got is a fast attack nuke. And I told my detailer, I says, well, I'll go back to sea on one condition. I need an NAC for chief of the boat because I didn't want to put uh, any E7 or E8 in an awkward position going back as a uh, chief, Master Chief Radioman and him junior to me. So I went back on USS Gernard as uh, chief of the boat. It's one of those things, uh, I'm kind of torn both ways. I say to myself, Jerry, why didn't you go into nukes earlier? Much more room. It's so much cleaner. Uh, you've got so much more to do on one of those. And on the other hand, the crew are quite different. Uh, the camaraderie on, on a diesel boat is so high, but on a nuke boat, it's kind of split. I'd mentioned before about the nuke trained and the non-nuke trained people, and it's almost like you have two crews. So you have to, it's, it's a quite a, a task, a chore, to try to bring everybody together. So you've got to work real hard to, to try to make sure that everybody's happy. And, of course, my job on there was the welfare and morale of the crew, plus watch assignments and things like that. So it was, uh, like I said, quite a bit different. But basically, it was uh, a lot the same as what we did on the uh, uh, diesel boat, but with the nuclear-powered boat, you can, you can do it for longer times. Uh, our assignment might be to go up, go out, locate a uh, foreign submarine and trail it, find out what they're doing. Just watch them, listen to them, make recordings of them so that anybody else, when they run across this submarine, they know who it is. Uh, and with a diesel boat, your time underwater is limited. You have to pop up and, and charge the batteries periodically. With a nuke, Time's not, the only limitations on a nuke is how much food you have aboard. We make our own air, make our own water, uh, so. Spent two years on there. I'd actually planned to be a 30-year man, but I found out that uh, the XO and I didn't quite see eye to eye on the treatment of personnel that were nuke trained, non-nuke trained. He thought that if you were a nuke and you committed an offense, AWOL, uh, drunk on duty, or whatever, even sometimes uh, getting caught smoking pot, he thought that slap the nuke's hand. The other guys, the forward guys, the non-nuke trained, hang them. So I said, XO, you know, we can't do that. So he and I were kind of at loggerheads about how to treat the people. Shortly after we went aboard, I found out that I did. One morning we were getting underway, and we took a muster, and one of the nukes was missing. So I reported to the XO that so-and-so was missing. And the XO says, well, Cobb says, uh, <clears throat> I told him that he could stay in this, uh, this trip because he and his wife were having some problems. I said, 
Okay, excellent, no problem. Next time we got underway, he was missing again. So, went to the XO, I said, what's going on, XO? Well, you know, he's, he's got this problem and everything else, and we, we don't want to waste a lot of uh, time and money on him, so I let him stay in again. Well, finally, this guy decided to declare conscientious objector. So they immediately disqualified him as a nuke. So the XO turned him over to me and says, Cobb, he's, he's going to work forward. And I said, OK, XO, I'm going to make him a mess cook. He was an E6 or E5 uh, second class nuke. And the XO says, you can't make him a mess cook, Cobb. He's a petty officer. I said, OK, XO, I'll make him a cook then. So I made him a cook. But anyway, at that time, I decided I'm not going to get along with this XO, so I put my papers in to retire. And we made a Westpac, and when we got back, or what headed back, we got a new XO. And the new XO and I saw eye to eye on everything. And I says, I think I'll pull my papers. Nah. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to get out. Go ahead. So I retired on uh, February 29th, which is not time to retire, 1980. And here I am today.